Hello and welcome to Carmen Miller's Talk of the Town, Fort Mill TKK. I'm your host, Patty Mercer, getting an update on York County in 2016 with our representative, Michael Johnson. Let's go inside and see what it's all about. Michael Johnson representing uh, this slice of the York County pie, I think we should say. Um, thank, first of all, thank you so much for being with me today. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I represent District 1, which District is all of Tiga K, and everything basically west of I-77. So if you think about it, I, I'm not entirely now, I'm not all of Baxter, but I am most of Baxter. But if, you're, if you live west, I'm also a little bit of East, where you can have the Coltharp Road to the Springfield area, I represent that area, and that's District One. It's about thirty-eight thousand people. Thirty-eight thousand people. Now you say Coltharp. That's my secret. Are you saying that <laughs> there might be some changes? And what we're talking about is the road that connects between Business Twenty One, Pleasant Road. Yep. It, it's kind of a way to avoid One Sixty. It is the way to avoid One Sixty, and it's probably one of the most underutilized roads in our it district. Is but it's also in really bad shape. And it, there's it. development happening on that road, a big housing development currently there is, is I think underway. 101 homes are gonna come in on that road, but those homes are gonna be about an acre a piece, which is That's very a, unusual for our area. So excited about the size of the I'm excited the about that too. Is that, um, was that the original ordinance for that or did that, is that township or is that county? That's actually that's in you. the county, that is in the county. So that is not Tiga K, that is not Fort Mill, that is the county which you represent. That is the unincorporated part of the county and I think the key to that was the developer wanted to do a larger homes. They want to do larger homes sitting on larger lots. So it was one of those things that was very easy to say, yes, that needs to move forward as opposed to our normal three, four homes per acre. However, there is some negotiation as it relates to the size of the homes, the size of the lots. That's where you can really speak up and make an impact. Well, I, th I think a best example of that is if you look at what's happening right now in Regent Park, where, the, where some of the golf course is being purchased. They wanted to go in, they wanted to do high density homes. What the county's done is we've already said, no, we're not gonna allow you to do that. The maximum you're gonna be able to put is 2.3 homes per acre. We're gonna require walking trails. We're gonna require uh, 100 foot buffer zones with trees between th those homes and existing homes. So that's where as a council, you can you can kind of have your way, right. but ultimately if the land is zoned appropriately, yeah. we can't stop any development. So that, and that's one of the, probably the hardest things about being a councilman in this area is almost all of our land is zoned residential already. The problem is, is we've built too many rooftops and we have to change that. Right now you, you're getting to a situation where we can't, because of the tax base, you can't really grow. You can't put in the infrastructure schools can't pay for themselves. So what you have to do is you have to take a step back and say, look, let's bring in more business, let's bring in more commercial, let's not stop residential growth, but let's slow it down just enough so that we can catch up. And that, that's the key. I think that's what the county's trying to do. And I think that's what both TUK and Fort Mill as municipalities are trying to do. That there are three decision makers in the areas that we live, Fort Mill, York County, Township, and then you've got Tika K. So how are the three of you working together to make sure that you're basically on the same page? Well, there's, there's the million dollar <laughs> and, and I think we are working better than we have in the past. You know, last year, 2015, we, for the first time we ever had a joint meeting. Um, Tika K, Fort Mill, the county, we all sat down. It wasn't a well attended by the public meeting, but nonetheless, it was a meeting. Um, my proposals on that though, and I've, and I've said this many times, are very simple. I think we, Tiga K and Fort Mill, we should create a special district up above the river. We should do away with our planning commissions. We should, Tiga K should appoint three people, Fort Mill should appoint three, the county should appoint three, and the school board should appoint one non-voting member. Mm -hmm. And those, that's who should plan, become the planning commission for this area. It's not easy for someone who lives in York or Sharon right. to say, well, oh, I believe you should, you should zone this. The, you know, this is an appropriate zoning in your area. What we really need is the, the people who live here to help make that decision. It's a very unique area with North Carolina to the north, the river mm -hmm. to the south, and we need to take more control. But in taking that control, each entity is going to give up some power. And I, and I think that's where the, that's the difficulty in getting it done is each of us giving up the power. 
looking ahead, I think we're going to be looking at some uh, new pennies for progress uh, opportunities. And there is a, um, a panel assigned to discuss what projects have priorities. How does that impact you? Well, the pennies panel, is, it's, it's six members three appointed by the county, three appointed by the municipalities. For the first time ever, we have two people who either work or live in the Fort Mill area on pennies. That's exciting. We needed some representation, people who drove through this area, who live in this area, to help uh, get these road projects back on track and get road projects that will affect our community right. on the next pennies. Right, okay, let's break down those road projects. What is in store for 21, Highway 21? Highway 21 is going to be expanded from the Springfield Parkway, basically mm -hmm. Captain Steve's North, all the way to 51. It's going to be a five lane road, wow. all the way to the North Carolina line. Okay, when we talk about Gold Hill Road and I-77, wow, if you hit that, at a certain time, you just need to be prepared that you're gonna sit through about five lights, five yeah. changes of lights. That's a, you know, that intersection is part of a Penny's program, Penny's for Progress And 3. it's also federal highways well, are part and, of that. And that was one of the delays, is you had to go to the federal government to say, can we even make these changes? Mm -hmm. But what I'm excited about is the county just applied to the CIV, the South Carolina Infrastructure Bank, for about $90 million. Okay. We're going to ask to redo the Carowinds intersection, the Gold Hill intersection, 160, Sutton Road, and Selenies. We're going to change all of those intersections. Okay. If we get this funding from uh, the CIV, which we'll know in the next six to eight months, we can actually do all of those projects at one time, as opposed to having to spread them out over a 10, 12 year period. I was we could about just to say, do it at yeah. once. That, so instead of 10, 12 year period, we're looking at. Immediate, immediate. Well, we could we could actually start moving forward, and hopefully the the plan is to continue forward with the diverging diamond, which is going in at Gold mm -hmm. Hill I seventy seven, but to actually expand that a little bit more, so that the Cato property, as it's being developed, will will lessen the impact on that area. When we think about the Cato project, and what we're talking about is what used to be the Knights yes, Castle former Stadium, Knights Stadium, right? I hear movie theater. I hear something similar to Blakeney or Ballantyne just going right there. Can you tell me what the ultimate plan is for the property there? I think you're looking at Ballantyne on mm -hmm. steroids. Um, Are you kidding me? Five and a half million square feet of Class A office space. Okay. Uh, there will be um, shopping, mm -hmm. uh, kind of in that Blakeney style shopping. There will be hotels. Uh, there's going to be some, some residential component, but that residential component is going to be more kind of townhomes with people who could would live and kind of work in that area. It's right. not going to be geared to what we would consider, you know, families. It's going to right. be kind of a different set. Um, it's going to totally change the face of this area. When you think about it, York County has been known for manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, but we're what not really known for Class A office space, you know, having businesses relocate here. And one of the things I'm excited about is Lincoln Harris, the developer of Ballantyne, is the developer for that property. Wow. And they're going to come in and they've already said they're going to bring in large companies, large corporations. They, they're trying to get companies to locate their national headquarters here. You know, we've already done that with LPL. Think about it. When you talk about LPL, you're thinking San Diego, Boston, Fort Mill. Mm -hmm. That's an exciting thing. What we yes. need to do is bring more of that here. And that's going to help broaden the tax base. And that's going to help the schools. That's going to help everything we're trying to do here. And I think that's the key that people are concerned about. They, It's not that people are not showing Southern hospitality. It's just that our schools have such an incredible reputation that we want to make sure that that balance of tax base is what it needs to be. Take me to the intersection of 160 and Gold Hill Road, um, right at the entrance of like Tiga K. Sure, the worst intersection. That's not in the, yeah, it's not the entrance of Tiga K, but it's uh, crazy. That's the worst intersection yeah. in your county. Yeah, and far. I know you've been really working hard to get the focus on that intersection. What's the latest? The latest is that there are barrels and work has begun, <laughs> and, and that's a big thing. Utilities, Psychologically, that feels that good. Is, that is a big deal. Utilities have been, have been moved, and now what you're going to see over the next few months is now that the utilities are gone, they'll start actually ripping up the land and, and start grading it and preparing it for the five lane. What you'll eventually see is two left-hand turn lanes at each of the four intersections to allow cars to move through. The, probably the most exciting part of that, though, is what's going to happen at Zor and 160, because mm -hmm. we're going to put a light at Zor and 160 and a dedicated left-hand turn 
turn lane. Oh, wow. So instead of right now where you get there and you just stop. Yeah. Uh, because you're, you know, no one will yield. Well, now that there'll be a light there. And, and cars will be able to kind of queue out of the way. Mm -hmm. So traffic should continue moving. That's going to be a big help to that area. Fantastic. Now, when I was driving into Tiga K, I think it was... After TKK Elementary, I saw a Pennies for Progress, dirt moving. That's the road that's going to connect where? That is the Hubert Graham Way connector, which is going to connect Gold Hill Road over to the Walmart in TKK, okay. that area. And when will that be finished? Well, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, most of these roads are either this coming up year, 2016, late 2016, or early 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, the 21 expansion, that's not till 2019. So um, York County is about to actually do a pilot program where we're going to have a four and a half year timeline to build all our roads. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be the only county in the state that has this program. So the goal is to get it from seven years down to four and a half. Um, what other things can we look forward to in 2016? I'll tell you, the most exciting thing to me, uh, other than the Cato and the roads, is the fact that we just approved some money for soccer and ball fields here in Fort Mill. Um, yes. Yes, that, that, that's I really know. exciting. Um, and hopefully we're going to see those. I've talked with the school district officials. I'm actually going to go to the school board meeting on Tuesday of, of next week to talk with them about it. And my hope is that we're going to see at least four Olympic-sized turfed fields, uh, mm -hmm. whether that be for lacrosse or soccer or football, open and ready for business by July go. of this mm -hmm. year. And, you know, we're a great place to live. We've not always been a great place to play if you didn't live near the True. lake. Well, now we're building the fields so you can play, and very soon this will be a great place to work because of the Cato project. So we're, we're about to have everything we really want here. Awesome. So if you had to give us a, a grade on a report card, what do, what's our grade? Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a good grader. I, I would give it, you know, I'd give us a B minus as of today. I think, okay. we, I think there's work to be done. I think the council has work to be done, but. Uh, it's, we're not where we were 10 years ago, and that's the most important thing. We're actually planning ahead, thinking ahead, and doing more. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Carmen Miller's Talk of the Town, Fort Mill Tiga K. I'm your host, Patty Mercer, standing outside of Carmen's new office right off of Tiga K Drive. To see more homes in our area, you can visit homesfortmill.com. Hey, or stop by and meet Carmen for yourself. Until next time, this is Patty Mercer. Bye-bye.